Hi everybody, today we're going to be doing another Q&A because we haven't done one for a very long time, I think like eight months or something. So I put out on Instagram, ask me your questions, and we're going to go through them today. And I got a lot of similar <laughs> questions about things. So this is kind of a, um, you guys want to know what's happening, basically, is are most of the questions that I got. Okay, so the first one that I got, probably more than anything else, is what has been the difference between... Miami City Ballet and New York City Ballet. What are the, you know, what do you like better? What do you like worse? Um, I haven't quite been at Miami long enough. I've only been there a month now. I just finished my fourth week. So far, I'm absolutely loving it. You guys have to remember, I'm also at a very different place in my life than when I left New York City Ballet. I was 23, sick as a dog, not feeling good, hated the way I looked, hated ballet. So of course, that was a rough time period. Obviously before that it was lovely and there were ups and downs and things um, and I got to do some wonderful stuff. But I'm at such a different place at Miami. I'm 31 now. So even if I hadn't gone through all the stuff that I did, just the, the age difference, that time that has passed, um, it's such a different thing. I appreciate certain things more. I don't worry about certain things as much. So it's kind of hard to compare at least at this point because I haven't been there long enough. But so far I'm absolutely adoring it. I love the facility. That was my one of my things. Anybody who's ever been to New York City Ballet knows that when you're in that theater, there are no windows. You are in there all day long. You have no concept of time, space. Um, weather, but Miami, at least the studios, I haven't been to the theaters yet, but the studios, they're light and bright and windows everywhere. They're stunning, stunning facility. Um, the other thing you have to remember, it's a totally different size company. Yes, the caliber is the same, but City Ballet, I believe we had 90 something dancers. Miami, we have 53. So there's almost half the amount of people. Um, so that creates a different dynamic. I feel like I see the same people all day long, all the time, and I'm in rehearsals with the same people, which is actually quite nice because you start to bond and you start to, you know, feel like we're all doing this together. The rehearsal process is totally different. Here at Miami City Ballet, we have almost two and a half months of straight rehearsal. We started at the end of July and we don't perform until mid-October. So during this rehearsal process, all we're doing is learning the ballets for the entire season. Um, which I'll talk about in a minute. You guys wanted to know some of the things I'm learning. But um, so we're basically learning all the, the year's material now. Whereas New York City Ballet, the way they work is they'll have like six week rehearsal period, six week season, six week rehearsal period, six week season. For us, once we start performing in October, we're on almost every weekend. So it's a whole different dynamic in terms of how it works. At New York City Ballet, the rep is much, much, much larger. So you don't, you can't learn it all in the two and a half months, um, which is why they do the rehearsal period perform, rehearsal period perform, whereas we do a big rehearsal period and then perform. We still obviously rehearse during the performance season, but we pretty much know all the material we're going to be doing. Uh, we're working on that now. So basically, I'll get back to you on what I like more. What, plus, you know, I'm dancing, I'm in a company, I'm at the point in my life where I am just so happy to be even wearing point shoes all day long because I was at a place in my life where I never thought I would again. That I'm just, I am like living on cloud nine every day. Like, yes, it hurts. Yes, it's hard. But, you know, and it's hard to compare when you leave a company when you are so miserable because, not because of the company, but because of your own issue, because of the illness, because of just the fact that I literally hated ballet when I left New York City. So it's a little bit hard to compare. Um, but the biggest difference is honestly the setup of the season, like I said. Um, and the other thing with Miami is the programs are set. Like program one is these three ballets. And we do that, you know, however many shows of that. Program two are these three ballets. And that's already set. City ballet, you know, you might do Symphony and C with Serenade one night and then Serenade might go with something else and then Apollo might go with Symphony and C and then you might do a full length maybe on a Wednesday and a Saturday that's mixed in there and then maybe you'll have a week of midsummer but maybe not really. Like the season at New York City Ballet is so intertwined and mixed in this and that that the, just the biggest difference so far are the number of the dancers and the setup. So that brings me to the second question that you guys want to know. Everybody wants to know. Also based on what I've kind of put out on Instagram. What roles are you learning so far at Miami City Ballet? Um, so many of you asked me this. I did put out this past week on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I am learning the lead in Slaughter on 10th Avenue, which is so 
fun. Um, it is not in point shoes, it is in heels, and which hurt a lot, by the way. <laughs> um, but it is a part of the Broadway show that Balanchine did a very, very long time ago called On Your Toes. And there's this whole kind of 25-minute-ish ballet that he took out of the Broadway show, and now it's its own standalone piece. Um, and I play a striptease girl, and my partner is the hoofer, and it's just very like 1930s jazz club, you know, which was raunchy back then, but it's not raunchy at all. You know, I take the garter off my leg, and that's like considered raunchy back then. But it is so, so much fun. Um, hair comes down at the end. You go from pink to black. It's so much fun. I did, I did put photos of that on uh, Instagram, and we were this week coached by... Philip Neal, who was my former New York City Ballet colleague, he was a principal there, who's, I love him to death, he's divine. So that was such a fun week this past week. But the other role that you've all figured out now, I did put another photo of that on Instagram. A lot of you were guessing Swan Lake, but I told you to do your research, and if you go to our website and you look at our season, we're not doing Swan Lake this season. Um, so it's a different bird, and it's Firebird. I'm learning Firebird, which was the, the role I talked about in my first week at Miami City Ballet update that I said I was very sore from. Um, it's Firebird. And it is, I love that role so much because it is different than Swan Lake. You know, Firebird, and this is something that, you know, Lourdes Lopez, our director, has been coaching me on. I've gotten to work with her privately, which has been such a gift. I mean, to be the new person coming in and being able to be coached by her privately, amazing. She's amazing because she did the role as well when she was dancing with New York City Ballet. And the thing she's been telling me to work on is, you know, Firebird is not sad. It's not Swan Lake where she's trapped and she's miserable. And she's a creature. She's not a person. She is strong. So my struggle was, was getting out of the Swan Lake habit and into the more Firebird habit. Because, you, you know, you guys know, you've seen me do Swan Lake on here. I got a good flap. I can flap really well. But it's taking it from sad bird to creature. So that's been my biggest struggle with Firebird is not going to that that soft bird place. But yes, I'm learning Firebird. So those are the only two ballets right now that we've actually worked on. They're working on a third that they started before I got here. Um, Ratmansky, Alexei Ratmansky's Symphonic Dances, but I'm not a part of that. And um, this week we're starting something else that I don't know if I can tell you about yet. But so far, it's been amazing. I love those two roles so, so much. You know, I say I'm learning them because I never like to count my chickens before they hatch. I don't want to say I'm performing them. I'm learning them. <laughs> um, you never know how these things work. Casting does not come out until two weeks before, which is, brings me to the next question you guys were asking. What are you, what are you performing when? We know what we're rehearsing. We have an idea of what cast we are, first cast, second cast, whatever. But we will not sh know the exact shows that we will do until two weeks before. That's exactly the way it worked at New York City Ballet, and that is the way it works here at Miami. So what I'm going to do, as I mentioned in that update video, I will put, I will constantly update my calendar page on my website. I will also, under my highlights on Instagram, I have a calendar um, little highlight. I will constantly update that so that you can also see my performances, the schedule, right on Instagram as well. And I'll probably do announcements here and there here on YouTube. Um, but either the calendar page on my website, which I will link below, or the highlight calendar tab on Instagram, that will not, I will not be able to tell you what performances I'm doing until early October. So just hang tight. Another thing you guys want to know what's my favorite thing at working in Miami City Valley. You want to know all about Miami. I don't want to answer these, that question yet because, again, I haven't been there long enough. I won't be able to answer that until I've performed, I think. But the day-to-day -day has been fabulous. The Ballet Masters are fabulous. My coworkers are amazing. I do really like that we didn't get to do it at New York City Ballet. Like, take, for example, Slaughter. We, Slaughter on 10th Avenue, we've already run it twice. We just learned it and we run, we, we've been, we literally ran it twice already. Um, and so I like that actually here we get more rehearsal. That was my one problem at New York City Ballet is oftentimes you got like the learning rehearsal, the work on it rehearsal, the run, and the and go. Here I feel like we get a lot of rehearsal. It might end up being too much. We'll see. But I do like that so far I'm already like running these things. I feel very prepared. And by the time we get to October, 
I'll know what I'm doing. What keeps you going on a long rehearsal day? That's a great question because literally this past week with Slaughter, we've had, I had six hours a day. Um, and it wasn't always my cast. You know, sometimes you're standing in the back while the other cast is doing it and you have to stay warm. For me at this point, again, you guys, I'm in sort of a different situation where I didn't do this for the last seven years. I did not live this life for the last seven years. So just being in the studio, being around the dancers, I had a moment the other day of, it was actually in Firebird rehearsal with Lourdes. And I was like, I'm standing here all by myself with Lourdes Lopez rehearsing this ballet for Miami City Ballet where like a year ago, two years ago, I hadn't even put a point shoe on for however long. Like it, it was not even in my realm of consciousness. So for me, it's at this point what keeps me going on long days is remembering back to the time where I wasn't dancing and that time where I thought I would never dance again. And that's something I say to you guys all the time on here is when you're having a bad day, when you are at that point where you cannot, you're like, why, what am I doing with my life? You've got to remember why you did it in the first place. You know, there's always going to be hard days. Your feet are always going to hurt. You're always going to, you know, there's going to be casting issues. There's going to be this issue, there's going to be that. But you have to remember why you were there in the first place. You've got to remember, okay, why, why do I love this? You know, is it the dancing? Is it the music? It's the expression. When you're having a rough day, remember back to that kid that you were or wherever the point was where you decided you loved to dance. And remember that. So in those hard days, honestly, that's what keeps me going, is remembering why I'm there in the first place. Can you comment on the Laura Spencer deal with Prince George? Okay, I said a little bit on Instagram. I don't want to go into this too much because I like to keep things positive and happy on here, but I do feel like I need to address this. If you didn't see it, I will link it below. Basically, she um, is a host on Good Morning America, and she essentially made fun of Prince George for taking ballet. And um, the ballet world, the dance world, everybody was up in arms, as they should be, totally inappropriate for her. And not only did she say something about, I don't think that'll last, she laughed at him, the audience laughed at him. Um, yeah, totally inappropriate. It was, I mean, we are all very, very upset about it because not only did she make fun of boys doing ballet, she kind of made fun of ballet in general as if it's like we're not, it's not a serious art form. Oh, that won't last, and da, da 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 and we're just kind of flitting around in tutus, you know. But, so first of all, no matter who you are, if you're watching this, do what you love. Go after your passion. I don't care what gender you are, what race you are, what um, sexuality you are. Boys can do ballet, girls can do sports. Girls can be scientists, boys can be, you know, fashion designers, like, it, you know, all of those gender stereotypes, doesn't matter. Go after your dreams. It was totally inappropriate, totally uncalled for. But to be honest, you guys, my biggest problem with the Laura Spencer thing wasn't the fact that she made fun of boys doing ballet, is that she made fun of a child. He's six. He is six years old. Who makes fun of a child? You know, children are playing, they're running around, they're totally innocent. They don't, you know, they're figuring out life. Like, think about it when you were six. Like, some of us knew what we wanted to do, some of us didn't. Like, you're a kid, you should have a childhood. And she made fun of a child. And that's what rubbed me the wrong way. Royal or not, I don't care. She made fun of a six-year-old. And I had such a, I had such a problem with that. And I put a little thing on my Instagram story about it. Um, and I just, I think making fun of a child is so inappropriate, ballet or not. It could have been making fun of a child doing, you know, mathematics. I don't care. Do, like making fun of a six-year-old is totally inappropriate and uncalled for. And that, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but no, it was completely rude, insensitive. And just kind of, you know, ballet, we always get the rap of, well, it's just pink and pretty and tutus. And no, it's so much more than that. Without the boys in ballet, we couldn't do what we do, you know, without them lifting us. I remember it's, I think it was Darcy Kistler who said, be nice to your gentlemen colleagues, ballerinas, ladies, because he has to know his steps and yours. All you have to do is what you do. He has to know what you're doing so he can partner you and know what he's doing with his feet, with his arms. So the guys in ballet are some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. So... That's where I want to leave that. 
ballet boys can do ballet and we need boys to do ballet. I know you, I don't know if you've answered this before, but what was the hardest role that you've ever done? Aurora, hands down, <laughs> hands down. Nothing tops the Sleeping Beauty in terms of how hard you have to work. Okay, another thing you guys have asked me a lot, um, many, 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 many of you actually, somewhere along the lines of, are you dating? Are you seeing someone? Would you ever get married again? Um, I, being, first of all, let me go back, answer that. Would I ever get married again? Yes, I'm not one of those people who thinks all men are pigs based on what happened to me or that I'm never gonna get married again because this and that, no. I would love to get married again. I went into my marriage the first time really seriously and wanting it to last and saying, you know what, 50 years, that I'm gonna do this. Like, I took it so seriously. I have no problem with being married again. I'd love to be married again. In terms of personal life, at least for now, I'm really gonna to not, you know, it, the wedding was public, the relationship was public, and the vlogs, we did the vlogs and everything, because, not because I wanted to like share everybody in my life, but because of how much it meant to me. You know, I really wanted to bring you guys into my relationship and my marriage because I took it seriously, I thought it was serious. Um, he, you know, I was truly in love and I, I wanted to show our family life. But as of right now, I'm not comfortable sharing a lot of personal stuff like that specifically. Because you guys want to know what I will tell you is yes, I'm seeing someone. Yes, he is a gem. He's incredibly special and he's worth it. This time, I knew what to look for this time. Um, and we are happy. And that's all I'm gonna say. Whether or not we start posting about it on social media eventually, I don't know. We we are not there yet. We kind of want it to be about us. Um, our friends and family know, but that's that's where I'm leaving it. Um, I'm not gonna be plastering it all over social media. Um, just not 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 right now. Um, but yes, I'm seeing someone. He's lovely. We're happy. And that's all you need to know. How do they teach you steps for ballets? By a video recording or from an actual person? Great question. Both. Um, for example, both for Firebird and for Slaughter. What happens is we have someone come to stage it. Um, sometimes company do, companies do things in-house, but typically for Balanchine ballets or Robbins ballets or like a Wielden ballet or a big choreographer, um, they often have their own stagers and ballet masters. So for let's take Firebird for example. Um, actually my former colleague Glenn Keenan of New York City Ballet, she's now the ballet mistress there, she came for two weeks to set Firebird. She knew it, it was all in her head. She had every step in her head. She's amazing by the way. But at the same time she brought the video for us to see, for us to reference. I think she brought on her iPad, she had like three different casts doing it. One was Lourdes, one was Meryl Ashley, one was Ashley Bowder. So we kind of had references from different points in time, different people, different styles. Um, but at the same time, she knew every step. Same with Philip. Philip knows everybody's part, back and forth, the counts, this and that. But he brought the video so we could see it and we could reference it. Um, so typically, someone will come and stage it. Now if it's in-house, like Nutcracker, for example. Nutcracker, everybody kind of knows, you just do it, but our own ballet masters know it, they will set it. Um, or sometimes, if no one is coming to stage it and it's new, we do have to use the video, but nine times out of 10, everybody who comes in the studio, every ballet master, will already know probably 75 to 100% of the ballet. Like they know what they're doing. Otherwise it wastes the dancer's time, it wastes their time. Um, and then it just becomes hours and hours of going back to the video and this and that. In my experience, every time I learn a new ballet, the ballet master already knows it or the stager already knows it and we use the video for reference or you know different arm changes between casts. Sometimes they'll say, oh, this looks better on you and this looks better on you. Oh, let's see what Lourdes did. Oh, let's see what Ashley did because um, things change over time. That's when you typically use a video. But for us, we always have someone teach us. Tips for dancers joining a company for the first time. A lot of you want to know tips of dance, tips for dancers changing companies. Don't overwhelm yourself. You have time to figure it out. Um, take one day at a time, one rehearsal at a time. Don't feel like you have to know everybody's name and this and that day one. You know, you'll get to know people, you'll get to know how the place works. Um, 
you know, for me, we started Firebird day one. And so it was kind of like, all right, throw in the deep end. But I, you know, if you just be gentle with yourself, if you take the pressure off yourself to be perfect the first day, it gets a little bit easier. You know, if you're young and you're starting in a company, you're going to have a bit of an easier time simply because you're going to be learning things like snow and flowers and you'll be in the back and you might not even be the one dancing. So you'll have a little more time to figure it out. If you're changing companies like I did and they throw you in the deep end, you kind of have to like, all right, bring it. But just be kind to yourself. Be gentle. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect day one. It doesn't have to be, you know, your best dancing day one. The ballet masters know that you have to get in performance shape. You know, you can't expect to go day one and run the ballet perfectly. Like Firebird, we're still not running it. It's that difficult. We have to build up to running it. Um, because you, you go from like a two-minute solo into a four-minute part of it. Day one, you can't do that. And they're not expecting you to. Even working with Lourdes one-on-one, -on -one, she was like, I would rather us do this in sections and do it technically right and you get in the right muscle ha you know, muscle memory habits and things than just kind of plow your way through it just to get through it. So remember that they know you don't have to run it day one. They know you have to build up to it. Um, you know, get to know the building, take your time. Don't feel like you have to do everything day one. I think that's my biggest tip. Ease into it, gentle, especially if you guys are young, 17, 18, 19. I mean, my first couple weeks at New York City Ballet when I was 17, I was like deer in headlights, didn't have a clue. I think I've told you guys before, I belly flopped in my first rehearsal, like it, pretty much as bad as it could go, it went. So <laughs> just... Be kind, be gentle, take it all in, take care of your body. You know, joining a company or starting in a company is not the time to like go on a crazy new diet or I don't think I'm going to eat today or I'm going to do 80 extra workouts. Be smart, be kind, be gentle with yourself and, um, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. A lot of you want to know what I eat in a day, what my daily schedule is like. Those are going to be separate videos. Um, day in the life of I'm work trying to get that set up at the company. Um, same thing with the food, same thing with all of that. If it has to do with that, that will be its own separate video. Oh, the other thing you guys asked me, a bunch of you, am I back in Freed's? No, I'm still wearing suffix. Um, I think I did, I think the reason you guys asked is there was a photo of me in Freed's recently, but that's because it was an impromptu photo shoot and I didn't have my suffix, I didn't have my own shoes with me and they didn't have suffix and they had freeze, so I had to wear freeze for the photo shoot. But no, I am still wearing suffix. Um, I love them. Um, I just have to, I'm kind of in between sizes right now and have to find the right size, but I am still wearing suffix and Miami is allowing me to do so. A couple of you want to know about all the different summer intensives I've been to. If you want, maybe I'll do that in a separate video as well. Summer intensive reviews, what I know about each one, this and that. Um, I think I've said to you guys before my favorite one was um, Houston, Houston Ballet. I went to it 14. Four classes a day, six weeks, super hard, but that is where I improved the most. I loved Houston Ballet Summer Intensive. Um, also recently witnessing Miami City Ballet Summer Intensive. That's another really crazy one. <laughs> they, I didn't realize, but they do minimum two technique classes a day. And I think some of the older girls even had like two point classes. They would do technique point, technique variation, or technique point, technique pas de deux, technique point, technique point. Like it's like, they had like four classes. So that's another good one. I'm all about, if you're going to go away for a summer intensive, you want to get as many classes as you can. Otherwise, what's the point? All right, guys, so I'm going to end that there because I think this was already this video is like, I don't know how long this video is. But anyway, I really hope you enjoy this. We'll do these more from time to time. I love these Q&As because then I can really tap into what you guys want to know. If you missed that video about my first week at Miami City Ballet, the update, it is right down there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so much and I'll see you next week.